If uh, when you guys get introduced in class, do you wait for everyone to explain where they grew up, and then you go, "I grew up in Maui." Yeah, and that pretty much <laughs> takes the everyone's like, "Oh, right." Yeah, they're just like they're just kind of like, "Oh, Hawaii!" Like it's kind of it's kind of a surprise at first. Yeah. What was it like growing up there? Uh, when we go to visit, you know, after a few days, that island's pretty small. But for folks who live there, what, what's it like growing up on an island? It's a small island. Uh, you get to know everybody for sure. And everybody's like family back at home. Yeah. Always out there taking care of you, whatever you need. And, and when you grow up in Hawaii, especially in Maui, the water just becomes part of who you are, right? You guys spend a lot of time in the ocean and, and, and doing those kinds of sports. Were you both surfers growing up? Uh, I did not surf. You didn't surf? I bodyboard a lot, but not really surfing. Same, yeah. same. Really? Not a surfer. I expected uh, both you guys to be out on boards. Uh, first, time, you... first time I tried surfing, I, <laughs> I hit the reef. and That was uh, it? Yeah. <laughs> now, did you have to eat fish growing up? Yeah. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. yeah. It's probably the best thing for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what they say. And you'd go catch fish and then eat it? Mm -hmm. Is that how that went down? Yeah. 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 And, and both grew up playing baseball. Did you play other sports growing up in, in, in Hawaii? Uh, I played soccer uh, until like middle school, like seventh grade. And then, and then focused on baseball yeah. after that. How about mm -hmm. you? I played about basketball and football, soccer too, throughout elementary. As, yeah. as I went on to go to middle school and high school, it kind of it kind of dialed down to one, which is baseball. You know, back in the day, one of the reasons why um, a lot of people in Hawaii don't like BYU is whether well, two of you are sitting here on this show in Provo tonight. <laughs> they got mad of all their athletes leaving to come over here to play. And uh, back in the early 80s, their best football players had come over and play. Yeah, and we, played on Blaine's teams. We, got, we mm. got the player of the year every year, the Hawaii player of the year in football every year for like five straight years. So then we'd go over there and we'd go, why is everyone here why so they, much? Why do they hate me The church so is, is huge over here and all this and that. They were mad because um, BYU would come over and take you guys and bring you over here. <laughs> Did you guys sense that growing up? Um, not, not, not really. really no. Yeah. Because the church is a big part back home so yeah it's not it's kind of like a shock people would want to come here too they yeah don't really care my my uh my freshman year in my recruiting class we got the number one rated player and the number two rated player from <laughs> from the state of hawaii kurt govea and lucky hemuli both came to byu they really hated us after that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, you would go over there you could feel it you're walking in, you're like, hey, we're, we're on the broadcast team. We're, we're, yeah. we're going to say good things about you guys. Be nice like, to yeah. us, but they, they could not do it. Um, how sweet is it to go into Austin and take down Texas? I don't care if Texas is number one in the country or number 359. What, how, how much fun was that? It felt good. I mean, we were off to like a rough four games before that, four or five yeah. games before that. And I think taking that series at Austin was really big for us and a big motivator to kind of push us to want more. The last time we were down there, um, the feedback coming back was that uh, Texas would like to chat a lot. They like they were high and mighty. They were this and that. And BYU was the low of the lows. And Texas won, and that made it worse. Mm -hmm. Well, this time... You guys won, and then and then skipped town. What was the mood like from the Longhorns as uh, as they look up there and watch Colin Reuter hit his third home run? Um, they were kind of, I think they were kind of in shock, but they kind of started to like a little talking back back at us, and um, it kind of just motivated us to just go out there and beat them because they just think they're bigger and they just think they're better, and we just kind of went out there and proved. What what, what what kind of facility do they have down there? Do they get a good crowd in this facility? Because they always brag about they have great facilities down there. <clears throat> yeah, it was it was a good facility. It was a really nice facility. Um, they, they had a big crowd, so it got loud sometimes. But um, overall, it was, it was just a good experience. Well, you went three for 11, a couple of runs, made some big plays out in the field. You were three for seven with three runs driven in, scored a few times. A stone Cushing picked up save six and seven. Again, Reuter had... A really good series it felt like all over the lineup instead of just one spot everyone was contributing which is the key moving forward isn't it yeah it's it's very big for everyone one through nine to kind of contribute and put runs on the board and also our pitching staff kind of putting zeros up there against the yeah. other team and the starter's been tough right and the bullpen's been great it's just been some bad luck yeah yeah just some plays just didn't go our way or some things didn't go our way which is 
how the game works and just how things go. How, how different is it? You know, we always talk about the transition from high school, whatever, from high school basketball to Division One basketball. What's the transition like for you guys, and how different is it playing in high school in Maui to the level of competition and what the game is like now as you're playing Division One level in a P5 conference? Um, I think just overall, like, the games, the amount of games played in the season, it's just kind of like you have to really focus on your recovery and your body. I think the talent, too, is, like, on another level, you're facing – 90 plus every day instead of like 80 or like 70 so it's just um it was kind of a hard transition at first and then you kind of just go into the flow and get used to it you've had a little time because you had a red shirt year mm -hmm. separating high school from from the pitching you're seeing this year you're straight in uh every time you go up and we've talked about in the, in the broadcast every time you go up to the plate to face a new pitcher it's an education uh, at, at this level, isn't it? Especially in conference play, and how different is it from knocking around high school pitchers last year? Uh, I'd say the game just speeds up a lot faster. Games played at a higher level, the game's just going to get on you much faster. You just got to find ways to slow it down. How do you slow it down? Uh, I like to go and take a couple deep breaths, you know, kind of don't think and just do. Go out there and kind of help my team win. Is the biggest difference the pitching? Is there, like, facing the pitching that's kind of good every single game? And how do you manage the, the higher level of pitching? I'd say it's kind of a factor of everything. Pitching is probably one of the bigger things. Uh, it's facing a lot more velocity, a lot, a lot more different pitches with higher spin rates, and just finding ways to be able to adjust to those pitches and hit it hard to any, any place of the ballpark. Good to have Houston, Texas with us on our uh, live stream. La Roca, Baja, California in with us tonight. Um, this is kind of a cool show because everyone gets to see you out of uniform, uh, answering questions a little bit different than what you get in a post-game interview as we visit with Cahill Aloy and Keone Painter on the Wise Guys tonight. Live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and YSGuys.com. So you guys are very different ballplayers. Uh, speed, defense power so let's describe uh your games but i'd like you to describe his and then blaine will have we'll have kahio describe yeah, yeah i like Keone. it so let's break this guy down um i mean uh, he's just a hitter pretty much like he can just hit the ball anywhere of the field he can hit for power he can hit for average he can just put the ball in play um he's a big rbi guy for us too and getting runners in and so i think overall he's just He's one of our better hitters on our team, and he's able to see the pitch and see the ball really well, which is um, something that makes him such a good hitter. Isn't it a bit uncommon for a freshman to be able to do all that? You lead the team in RBI with 22. Yeah, it's, yeah it is. Uh, but, I mean, it's no doubt like about Cuyo and him coming in and doing this because, I mean, he's worked his whole life for this, and he's proven and, proven and shown in high school, and he's doing it right now that he, he can do it. So, are you so. are you surprising yourself at all? Uh, no, I think I prepared myself enough and yeah. worked hard enough to kind of go out there and do what I do. So, what what, what about Keone's game? Like, how, give us the scouting report on on his game. Uh, he's a solid defender in the outfield for sure. He's got speed. He can run. He can track down balls and at the plate. As long as he puts it on the ground or somewhere in the field, he's more than likely to be on first base. Yeah, you had some big catches in that Texas series. Yeah. Running back, putting your hand up, pulling them in. Did any of those surprise you? Um, no, not, <laughs> not really. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I think, they, uh, I think they surprise all of us when we see the ball leave the bat so fast. Mm -hmm. And there's so much ground out there. I mean, people, it's like an ocean of green out there covering center. You've been in center. You've been in left. Have you been in right, too? Or I've been in center and right. Center and right. So you got a lot of ground to cover. Yeah. Coming off the bat, you've got a millisecond to decide, kind of, am I going left? Am I going right? Am I mm -hmm. retreating? Yeah. Am I charging up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I think, just coming off the bat, I think you just have to see the pitcher throw the ball all the way. Like, if you see it, all, if you see it go all the way and you see it go off the bat, it's kind of just reaction from there. You just go. So based on where the pitch is, you can tell where the where the batter's going to drive the ball, and you can get a jump on it. Yeah, so, and then our, our coaches do a good job, too, in putting us in the correct spots or positions if you have to go on oppo, opposite side or if you have to go on pull side. So 
that helps too with um, positioning in the outfield. So how did you guys survive the winter? Yeah, it uh, snows over here. It doesn't snow over there. Yeah, well, way so. up, on, up, up on the on the volcano does, doesn't it? it yeah, but it's it barely. Uh, barely. Barely, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd say <laughs> at first it took time to kind of like take it in and be like, okay, this is like – this is like cold and like I should start wearing some like layering up or this and that. But I want to say I, I got used to it pretty quick. Driving okay in it? Yeah. I mean, being out there on the baseball field every day, whether it's 40 degrees, 30 degrees, I mean, I just found ways to kind of adapt and kind of keep going. You had an extra year, so you knew what this winter was going to yeah. be because you had one. And last year was a big one. Yeah, last Last year's winter was rough. <laughs> yeah, he, got, he got off pretty easy yeah. this winter compared yeah. to last winter. This was, it was brutal last year. Yeah. So we were talking to you before before we all came on the air, and you guys actually knew each other growing up. Like, talk about the relationship and, and how you interacted as you were growing up. Um, so all growing up, I played with his brother, uh, Vivo. And so he was just one year younger than me, and um, his dad actually coached me all through my young years and all middle school years. So um, it was honestly just a good experience just learning from his dad and being around them and just having that environment around me. Yeah, how about you? Uh, first of all, I'd like to say shout out to my dad <laughs> and my brother all the way down in Arkansas. Keep killing it, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I was one or one or two year two years younger than Keone, but just always being at the baseball field surrounding myself with like people like my dad my brother and my brother's teammates it kind of like it kind of taught me and i kind of learned certain things and picked up on on the game and how it should be played two non-surfers mm -hmm. as we've come to know yeah i mean i i think for us it was like we didn't really we would go to the beach and all that, but we didn't really pick up any other hobbies because we were just basically doing baseball every day. So yeah, you guys were you guys were dialed in. And baseball, I mean, even here in in Utah, where it's not a warm weather um, climate where you can play year round, they still go inside and hit. You guys do that during the winter in the indoor practice facility. Baseball, when you decide that that's what you're going to do, you kind of have to do it year round, don't you? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. tell us your. There's got to be a spear fishing story or something. As you guys have uh, grown up eating fish that you've caught from the from the ocean, what's your best fish story? Uh, my best fish story is probably going to the beach with my family, and we were out shore uh, shore fishing, just casting, seeing what we'd catch, and yeah. I about snapped my line about three times in a row, and then after the third time, I was like, "That's it, I'm done." <laughs> so after that, I just watched my the rest of my family just fish. You were done fun. bringing them in. Well, yeah. did you snap it on a snag, or did you like hook into like something a great that was so wide big or what? It's just like a snag, a hook, a bunch of things. <laughs> you you were one and done. That was it. Yeah. What about you? Um, I would go fishing when I was younger. I would go fishing with my papa all the time. He would take the boat out and we'd go deep sea fishing. Oh, I, so you'd go off the coast yeah, a bit? Never again, though. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's rough out there. Yeah, right? yeah, it's scary. Mm -hmm. you, did you bring in any sharks or what? No, we brought in a. He brought in a uh, a fish. I don't know how big it was. I forgot what fish it was, but yeah. And so you guys didn't surf, but you you did. You call it bodyboard or boogieboard? Which you? Do? I mean, uh, same thing. Bodyboard, boogieboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I remember back on Oahu, like we'd go over, um, and we'd be watching locals, and and they were body surfing, but they had McDonald's trays. <laughs> It's like, did they go to McDonald's and get those trays and come over here and use it to... And, uh, and sure enough, they did. Yeah. My papa was telling me a story that he used to do it on a shovel, too. <laughs> just a shovel. A uh, shovel. But like, it's just something to cut into the water yeah. and to steer with, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. like it's a Monday night. When, when we think of growing up in, in Maui, on the island of Maui, on a Monday night, it's Monday night, everyone's going to the beach with a big bonfire and just, just hanging out, or was it just... Baseball practice and going home, getting something to eat and going to bed. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, the beach was like a, a bonus, just mm -hmm. going out and spending family time, just bonding, having that having that day out of the week where you can just release and just let everything go and just not think about anything. Yeah. Now, you, on Sundays, you told us that you guys saw each other a lot because you were in the same ward. Yeah. Were you in the same ward all, the whole time you were growing up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys have known each other the, your whole lives pretty much, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
There yeah. you go. That's cool. Yeah. And how random is it that you're both here as teammates yeah. in the starting lineup tomorrow night and all weekend? Yeah, it's crazy. It's cool. It's cool to see. It's cool to see both of us just kind of grow up and then both come to BYU and do this thing together. How has your BYU experience been? What have you liked most about it? Uh, so far, it's so good. I mean, I'd just say the weather was one of the bigger factors for me. That was pretty much it. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, uh, for me, it's it's been really good. I I would say the weather weather too. Nothing else but the weather, but yeah, that's it. So the wet, the weather's a challenge, and everything else is great. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> BYU freshman Kahi Oloy and redshirt freshman Keone Painter on the Wise Guys today, both from the island of Maui, and appreciate some of the comments on our live stream. Um, when we think of Maui now, we think of those fires and Lahaina, which many of us from here have been to. Uh, vacationing over the years and much of where we ate and stayed has burned to the ground. What, what was that like as, as uh, native uh, Hawaiians seeing that happen to your island? Uh, it was rough actually getting back, t back home and actually seeing what actually happened. It was kind of like heartbreaking for sure. Just yeah. seeing all the homes and just a, a lot of people and, all these houses and just all that being overtaken by the fire. It was just, it was one of those things where Maui as a whole kind of came together and kind of worked on picking each other up and ask, asking each other for support, which was really good. I mean, without the local support from one another, I don't think we'd be as strong as we, we would be, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean that same for me. I, it was kind of, I was kind of at shock first. Um, I did not think it was gonna. I did not think that was gonna happen. And it was kind of a, everybody just got together and we kind of showed aloha to Lahaina. We uh, came together with all our support and people volunteered to help go out there. And um, I think that was all, that made us stronger as a community. Lahaina strong. The um, the pictures that I I thought were most um, ironic, stunning was uh, uh, the city, the community there literally on fire and the waves were just coming in like it was just like they do. Mm -hmm. They just come no matter what. So here's this island surrounded by water that's that's on fire. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like seeing a boat on fire at the lake when you're surrounded by water and, and no one can put the boat out. Um, and and I, I thought of that. There was there was one that one beat shot of of just the waves coming in like they always do, and with so much water right there, but no one could get the fire out. Yeah, it was it was hard. It was just the conditions that day were really bad. It didn't help put out the fire at all. Yeah. So did you guys? What high school is over there? Would you have played against kids from that area? Yes, mm -hmm. Lahaina Luna. Lahaina Luna. Lahaina Luna. And both your teams had come through and play them. Yeah, well, we all played at one stadium, but like a lot of teams would go there and play at their at their stadium, football stadium. So you knew a lot of kids, a lot of folks oh, yeah. displaced from that. And what's the latest on on the recovery? If do you know, uh, I don't I haven't really seen know for much. Sure. I think it's more of just rebuilding and kind of rebuilding infrastructure and kind of building homes and just finding ways for the people that did lose their homes and yeah. much other things to have them have a place to stay or mm -hmm. something like that. It does teach you a lesson of how quick things can change in life. Huh? Yeah. You just never expect that to happen. Just like you wake up every day and you expect to go through a day like you went through all the other days and, um, and, and things change uh, so quickly and, the wind and the, the fire and it just changed a, a community that all of us have known our lives and bam different yeah i think that was that was really big a big uh factor and just i think it just helped our community kind of get together and just kind of be one big su support system you know uh for those that were in need like for the families that were missing everybody back at home was was really helping to kind of figure out who it, who's where and what they need, if they need food, water, yeah. place to stay, just always being out there looking out for one another. Yeah, and I think you mentioned it too, that this the coming together, uh, sadly it takes sad things sometimes to bring folks together, but, but we do come together. Yeah, I mean, 
Maui was always a strong community. Like we always, Lahaina was a really strong community, and um, I think this just made it even stronger, and it made everybody even closer. So I mean, it's just yeah, I was sad what happened, and it, but it was a good something good came out of it where people came closer and everybody um, we showed aloha to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I'm interested. You, you both mentioned the weather was a big challenge. Um, and even though you were in the same ward growing up, you went to different high schools, right? Um, but you both chose you both chose to come to BYU. I, I'm interested to know what the decision making process was for you. Why you know why BYU, BYU for you? Why BYU for you? I mean, I'm I'm part of the church, so that's a one reason why. I mean, and the coaching staff here, the facility here, um, it's kind of just the environment that I'm in and. Uh, the people that kind of surround yourself with that on the baseball team, it uh, really helped my decision to come here. I'd say the same thing. It felt like a place I could call home. Isn't it interesting that as young guys, you come here and, and you're getting started and the person you marry is probably walking around you on campus, just haven't met her yet. But this is the setting where a lot of your life's decisions are going to be made that will impact the rest of of your life and and so just getting here number one is uh uh an accomplishment and a credit to both of you because this is the setting where uh a lot of the rest of your decisions are going to originate from i don't know if that makes it scary walking on campus tomorrow but <laughs> well I don't, I don't know about getting married but just yeah but <laughs> well, yeah we're not saying this week we got four games this week we don't have time for that this week but this is where it happens and that's hey, you exciting you don't even have time to date right now oh. it's in season right oh. so that's cool all right we've got five questions for you and we'll get you on your way byu freshman kahio alloy and redshirt freshman keone painter uh, grew up in the same ward over in maui and now they're on the same roster here in provo utah uh, Blaine, you ready to work them through yeah, five? Yeah, so, so we'll have, we'll, I'll ask the question and you'll each answer. And these are just off the top of your head. It helps us get to know you a little bit and, and all the folks out around the world listening in and, or watching. Plus, we're going to document it yeah, we're and document it. revisit it later. Yeah, and if they're terrible answers, we're going to let you know. No, <laughs> so, okay, your favorite sports movie. Let's start with you. Uh, Sandlot. Sandlot. Classic. Um, oh. Oh. Hmm. Probably Moneyball. Moneyball. Oh, yeah. That's another good one. Two good baseball. The Sandlot, by the way, almost the entire film was filmed here in Utah. Did you know yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Figured that uh, out. Hey, ask, um, ask Keone the next one so that uh, yeah. he doesn't get all that extra yeah. time to come up with the <laughs> yeah. answer. So favorite singer or band? Uh, Molly. Molly? Maoli. Oh, mm. Maoli. How do you spell mm. it? M-A-O-L-I. I have to look that one up? Maoli. Maoli. Mm. What kind of music? It's reggae. Oh, so reggae. Mm. Yeah. All right. It's like okay. a Hawaiian reggae. Nice. Mm. So, that, I, I'm, I'm going to look at that one. You know I will. I know you will. He knows I will. I'll I go look that. Will. I'll go up. Maoli. I'll go look it up. So, Common Kings, I, I thought they were from Hawaii with all their, with kind of their reggae Hawaiian. Mm. They're from California. Yeah. <laughs> there's like, there, there's just different types of reggae. So. Yeah. Very disappointing. I wanted them to be from Hawaii. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, fa Fiji. Favorite. Fiji? Yes. Just like F-I-J-I? Yes. And what kind of is that? Hawaiian reggae. Hawaiian reggae. Hawaiian reggae. <laughs> The kind of music we hear when we walk out of the Hilton out there, is that what it is? Yeah. Just the, okay. So, yeah, so right. which, hey, I love it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look them both up. So, so this is a follow-up to that question. I'm adding a question, by the way, Dave. Yeah. Right. What would be your walk-up song? Um, or do you have one? Do they, do they well, do that at BYU? Were you yeah, walk-up song? Yeah. Do it's um, make, make Them Bum Then. It's not by Moly, but... It's uh, it's like a reggae song. Is it? Yeah. Okay. That's how you roll. What's yeah. yours? What's yours? Same thing. Uh, murderation. Uh, murderation. It's by Beanie Man, and I forget who the other artist was. When you okay. when you said I'm, this is what I want for my walk up song, did they go? Uh, how are we supposed to find that? Oh, no, no. Did they know? Did they just get it? Yeah. Oh, they knew. All you get is well, he knew up. Beanie Man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Fiji. I want to know. I want to know if TJ when he comes on the first thing. Does he know Beanie Man? I'm sure that TJ knows Beanie Man. We'll ask him. He's no, he says no. no. He says no. He's in the green room. He says no. No beanie man for Okay. Producer. All right. Okay. Next one. Favorite breakfast cereal? I would toast crunch. All right. Okay. Oh, uh, Captain Crunch right now. Yeah. Captain Crunch. Captain's that's classic. That's classic. That'll be a that's classic his. your whole life. Yeah. 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 Never, never can fail with Captain Crunch. <laughs> All right. Your favorite? Well, 
Your favorite baseball moment. It doesn't have to be a BYU. Your favorite baseball moment. We'll start with you. Favorite baseball moment ever. Mm. I would say when I was um, in middle school, we went to Little League World Series. Uh, regionals. The regionals in San Bernardino. Yeah. I would say that playing in over there was pretty fun. How close did moment. you get to the show? Uh, we were in the semis to go into the championship to make it to the Little League World Series. Oh, wow. Nice. That's yeah. very cool. That's cool. Mm. Uh, I'd say playing the state tournament, state championship with my brother, high school. Oh. And, and the, partly because you got to play it with your brother, right? Yeah. Very cool. And how old's your brother? Uh, Is he older or younger? He's older. He's a sophomore. Okay. Yeah, and, right. and their second, the, both of their second is Wampin on Texas last weekend at Austin. Yeah, so that's, that's close. That somewhere. was pretty good too. So, okay, uh, your favorite thing about Hawaii? Your turn first. The beach, the beach. Even though he doesn't surf, the beach. That's the same for me. It's the beach. Yeah, the beach. Yeah, it's pretty special over there. <laughs> really it? supporting that stereotype of the beach, yeah. guys. Because, but you know what? I, I, we. That's why we go over there is to see the beach. Yeah. So you guys just had it. You guys had to come over here to see snow. We have to go over there to see the beach. Yeah, pretty, my, pretty my, my, my place, my place on Maui is any place on the Wailea Coast. So mm -hmm. e either either the Marriott there or the Grand Wailea, any of those. Oh, and yeah. and I just put me there. I'm great. <laughs> I'm just fine. So you got the Utes tomorrow night, and then Baylor in for three uh, in the Big Twelve. Let, let's start with the Utes. It's a it's a rivalry game. The one, the last one got rained out, right, or snowed out. Yes. So here's the first time against them. Um, this season, mm -hmm. that's a big one. It always is because it's Utah, but there are bigger ones that mean more coming Thursday. So how do you balance the week? I mean, I think we just attack the week like the same, bring the same energy. We just have to go out there and just play like how we did against how we did against Texas, and just want to be hungry. Just carrying it over, mm -hmm. win to win to win. Yeah, yeah. I would have thought that that was a happy plane ride home. I was on the plane ride coming home from West Virginia where they got one of two, had a chance at the second, uh, and then coming home from uh, the uh, UC Davis, which was a learning experience for everybody. So I would imagine coming home from Austin, it was a pretty good time. It was for sure. Yeah. Big celebration for sure. Well, the Utes on the road, and then you get eight straight home games. Mm -hmm. So and this this guy will be on the call for all eight of those. Yeah. So let's get some let's get some highlights. Do some great mm -hmm. stuff, so let's Dave can stuff. so Dave can brag about you. Show yeah. those seniors how to do it. You know, <laughs> so, with the, you guys are the future. And when you come back on this show, uh, this is the freshman appearance. And as we move through your careers, uh, for the senior appearance, you'll go. Hey, you you guys can just leave, and the two of you will do the show. That's, <laughs> That's right. the evolution. By of, then, by then. Of, uh, yeah. Time in front of the in front of the camera. So thank you so much for being yeah, here. Yeah, we're great. Yeah. Great, thank you. great that you guys would come join us. Good luck Thanks tomorrow night, and we'll thank see you, you Thursday. Thank you. At the you ballpark, guys. guys. Thank you. Kione, Cahillo. Uh, the Hawaiian punch, it's kind of fun to say, but the but we got the big hitter and the big catcher, and BYU's fortunate to have both of you. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. You. you. Appreciate got it. it. You got it. Say hi to your families. We'll send you the podcast, and you can send it to them tomorrow. Okay? All right. <clears throat> awesome. BYU Utah, that's tomorrow night on Pac-12 Network and BYU Radio. And then Baylor and uh, BYU Thursday, Friday, and Saturday afternoon as they get back to the Big 12. And uh, fun having them there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And, 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 and as you mentioned, that's the future. Those are the young guys. Um, isn't it fun? Two, two guys from the same ward growing up on Maui. Um, and, and produce two players, e even though they were different high schools, that come and play at this level in the Big 12 and get a chance to play together. That's really cool. Now they're having so. a chance to, to meet Coach Woods, who's going to join us in just a moment. Yeah.